I guess it was just a matter of time before someone brought us full circle. You know, the role-playing genre largely got its start around a table, but then video games come along and it gave the player a deeper connection to their game world. Then virtual reality becomes a thing, and then we're playing on tables again. Mac cheese to host, and we're reviewing Demio. So Demio is this turn-based, roguelike dungeon crawler in VR that's very clearly inspired by the tabletop genre. After all, it puts you around this table, and you roll dice on it. That's pretty much its selling point. And I have to get this out of the way first, First because I've seen and I've played a lot of these games with the gimmick of Oh, we're bringing the tabletop to virtual reality. That's stupid. First of all, the game lets you scale the table and I never really found myself playing it at a size where it feels like an actual tabletop game because if you zoom in, you get a much smoother experience. But more to the point, if your game can be played on a table, it can be played on a flat screen. And if I'm just playing a game where the most you really have to do is move characters around on a grid, you can bet that my preference of play is gonna be the latter. It's a lot more comfortable to play games in front of a computer rather than strapping a brick to your face to get the same experience. That's why I honestly preferred playing this game on desktop rather than VR, a choice that the game does offer, although most of the footage in this review is gonna be in virtual reality. Nevertheless, now that we've established that this whole VR tabletop thing is really just a gimmick that loses its charm three minutes in, I guess the only thing left to really do is judge the game based on its merits. Let's do that. So Demio has seven classes that you can play as, a guardian, which fills the kind of tank role. She has this armor mechanic which basically acts as extra health and she can use one of her turns to perpetually replenish it. The assassin is a class built around stealth. They can use their sneak ability to render themselves invisible to enemies, moving through them undetected. And they even have a backstab mechanic where if you attack behind an enemy, you deal extra damage. The sorcerer can use a lightning attack to stun enemies, rendering them incapable of movement and attack for a turn. They also have access to some very powerful spells which if used at the right time could clear out entire rooms at once. The hunter is more so the ranged class. She has this bow that can attack enemies over long distance, which is incredibly useful for being able to weaken enemies as your other guys close the distance. The bard can buff nearby allies and give them boosts to their damage output and resilience. The warlock has this dog thing that you can direct to attack enemies, and when the dog does this, they replenish their health and even gains experience points, which increases their health and damage output. Finally, the barbarian is the class that deals the most damage and is given access to a grappling hook that can shoot out over long distances, which can pull enemies out of reach into your range of attack. There are also a number of adventures for you to go on. The Black Sarcophagus, taking place in a pretty typical dungeon where you fight through elven cultists. Realm of the Rat King, which takes place in the sewer and you fight rats. Roots of Evil, located in a forest occupied by evil druids. Curse of the Serpent Lord, which sees you navigating desert ruins. And the Reign of Madness, which takes place in a village now occupied by monsters. These maps have different enemies and scenery and it kind of changes things up, but the gameplay loop mostly remains the same. And there's very little difference in playing different adventures than otherwise. Each adventure has three levels. The first two, you look for an enemy with a key. You then take that key and find the exit of the dungeon. Seems easy enough, but the dungeon is swarming with enemies, forcing you to fight every step of the way. You can make default attacks by simply going up to an enemy and hitting them with your weapon, or you can draw a card from your hand. Cards are often in limited quantity, removed from your hand upon use, and range from potions to regain health or increase damage output, or powerful attacks to use against the enemy. Some cards are universal, other cards can only be used by specific classes. They're replenished over time, but can also be found in chests scattered throughout the map. There are also fountains that replenish health and piles of gold that can be collected and spent at checkpoints in between levels. Here you can sell unneeded cards and buy more useful ones. The third level is the boss arena. Defeat the boss and victory is yours. So maps are somewhat randomly generated. The layouts themselves remain the same, but the chests, keys, exits, fountains, their locations get kind of switched up. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple game. One problem though, it's not fun. When I say the game swarms you with enemies, I'm not kidding. Instead of adhering to good game design and principles, the game just throws as much enemies as it possibly can at you. That's where its difficulty derives. They come at you from the front, the sides, from behind, and they certainly aren't pushovers either. Enemies often possess a considerable amount of health, meaning that it can take several turns to clear out a room, and some of them have these BS abilities like, oh, I'm gonna teleport one of your guys to the other side of the map. I can turn one of your characters evil, and they'll attack their allies. Oh, I can regenerate generate health each time you kill an enemy. And even worse, all these enemies that the game throws at you, you have to sit through their turn. You ever play a Total War game? Because it, it's like that. <laughs> So 
So, at best, combat is drawn out, repetitive, and fatiguing. At worst, it's just unfair. You have all these enemies attacking you, constantly bringing your health to the brink. There have been so many times where I just ran into this horde of enemies and I thought, wow, I, I really don't want to play this game anymore. Why would I want to when I'm constantly getting into these seemingly unwinnable situations that even if I could overcome, it would take an absurd amount of time for me to do so. It grinds the gameplay to a screeching halt. You know, maybe there's people out there who say, oh, Mac, you're stupid, you're dumb, you just don't know how to play the game. And you know what? Let's just give the game the benefit of the doubt. Not because I actually agree with you, I think you're stupid, but because it brings up another point that I want to talk about. So fine, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that I just don't understand the in-depth mechanics of Demio. I just haven't played enough of it to learn it. Well, here's my question. Why would I want to? The game isn't really fun enough for the mere gameplay to hold it up, but the game has no sense of progression, nothing to really work for. Sure, there's a leveling system, but it just unlocks purely cosmetic items like dice or masks or skins for your characters, none of which have impact on gameplay. You know what's central to tabletop gaming? Character customization and progression. Being able to level up and learn new abilities, being able to find and buy new equipment and weapons. Things that are simply not present in this game. But I guess that doesn't really matter when the extent of your game design is really just putting a table in front of someone and hoping that their reaction is one of, oh my god, it's a table! That's a table that's right in front of me! This is the best day of my life! Like, this is like that tabletop game, Dooblers and Daglins! If I can't level up and improve my stats, if I can't procure new equipment that can improve my character, if I can't work towards something, if I can't have fun, why should I play your game? The simple answer is that you can't give one. There's no reason to play this game, there's no reason to buy it. That's why you'll player count raggedy. And it does kind of suck because the game does have charm, even if the whole tabletop gimmick falls flat. You select adventures by actually choosing an adventure module. Uh, there's this hero's hangout modeled after a gaming club or store. It has books you can actually open and read. There's this arcade machine, there's this painting area where you can paint miniatures, which granted works about as well as VR miniature painting can be but still it's pretty nice. You can meet up and I guess chat with other people, or at least you could if the game had people playing it. What I'm saying here is that the game has charm, it just doesn't have the content to back it up. And I forgot to mention that multiplayer, like it actually is a thing, you can play with other people. But that's what I'll say about this. Maybe something could have been done with this thing. Maybe it could have been more than just a cheap gimmick, but unfortunately, if this game has potential, it will likely never be realized. I've tried to nose around and see if there's any future updates planned for this game, I found nothing. The developers seem to have completely moved on from this game and have moved into its sequel, Demio Battles, a game that sparked an amount of backlash from the community, because apparently Demio Battles was this PvP mode that was intended to be an additional game mode in Demio as a free update, but the developers changed course at the last second and made it its own game that you'll actually have to pay for, which I really think says something about them. Regardless, they might be satisfied with their little pet project, but I'm not. I give Demio a 3 out of 10. It is virtually impossible for me to recommend this game. To casual gamers, well the game's simple, but I doubt they'll be too happy with the game's unfair nature. To the more hardcore type, well the game's too simple and lacks any real depth, and there's no reason to really play it long term. To tabletop gamers, well again, this whole tabletop thing is a gimmick and it loses appeal fast, so not to them either. And how about that price? $40! That is a premium price tag for a game with such simple and cheap gameplay and so few features. If you really want a roguelike dungeon crawler, I feel like you could do so much better. Like, I'm not into this kind of stuff, but I mean, wow, you have to have a lot of pride in your work to charge $40 for the game. And I've got the game on sale for $23. Still not worth it. $40? Seriously? You gotta be tripping. But that is our review on Demio. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. Now, we do a variety of game reviews on here, and if you want to keep up to date with them, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.